नमस्कार नमस्कार वेलकम एवरीबॉडी वेलकम टू द थर्ड एपिसोड ऑफ लिविंग फॉरवर्ड अ शो इन विच वी टॉक ऑफ हाउ हाउ आर वी गोइंग टू बी लिविंग फॉरवर्ड विद अ करियर विद अ पैशन एंड विद अपॉर्चुनिटी it's my absolute pleasure that today i have with me joel paul managing director ranstad rice mart india and uh, even as you all gather from different parts of the world early morning for some of you late afternoon for some others very late night for some others so good to see you all just to let you know it's a It's raining cats and dogs and ducks and drakes here in Mumbai. If only I could have shown you uh, what the what the side outside looks like. Welcome, swagat hai ab sabka. A very warm welcome to each one of you. Yes, it's raining uh, like anything in Mumbai, and I believe since last evening it's also raining in Delhi and other parts of North India. Uh, south of course it's been raining for a while kerala a lot hello how are you how are you everybody raghuram how are you raghu ramanand dizo abhilash prasanam sohanlal betala welcome each one of you thank you for joining us on the third episode of living forward where we are actually beginning the season of hope so let me tell you a few things about the season of hope even as we are waiting for the rest of you to join in uh typically the nature tells us what season it is when it rains you see we call it monsoon when it's cold we call it winter but in this kind of a milieu where we are we thought that we had avid minor thought how about we infuse something to the world so rather we, rather than waiting for the world to have hope i'm inviting each one of us to create this as a season of hope and to infuse life itself with hope so we are going to be at the source of hope and we are going to infuse the world with it and with these words may i invite joel paul swagat 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 let me bring you on wonderful welcome joel hello Hi, how are thank you thank you for joel? having me i'm good i'm wonderful. good how are you i'm i'm great and it it's always uh, very inspiring to meet you Uh, uh Joel I met over a coffee uh, a couple of years back in Pune and uh, since then uh, we've been in touch and we exchange notes and the kind of work that he does really inspires me and so therefore uh this conversation is happening today that how how is working going to be looking living forward employability into this future so very happy to have you here Joel Thank you Ashish thank you for having me and uh, of course you know you are a very inspiring figure and we've you know we've talked about how uh, how this should work and how how work happens across the world and across India i think in every single conversation that we've had in the last uh, couple of years so great to be here great to catch up with you on this mm. um i hear it's raining like crazy over there Are you guys okay <laughs> is um, absolutely is the weather okay Yep, yep, yep. We are taking care of ourselves, and uh, so to dive straight into it, Joel. Uh, work didn't look like this in a very long time. The possibilities of work earlier were just statistics, but now it's it's in our face. What has happened? Well, so uh, I think a bunch of things happened. One is that uh, you know. just the availability of information has exploded tremendously from where yeah. we were even if you go back let's think about 5 maybe 5 to 6 years ago it was really hard to still get an internet connection in your house 
um, you know, in some places like mine, it's still hard to get internet connections in your house, but relatively, you know, it's improved a lot more. Um, and what that brought is, you know, the network revolution, 4G, 3G accessibility, the, you know, with devices getting cheaper, uh, accessibility to information has exponentially increased over the last few years. I think it's almost crazy exponential uh, increase. And that, that meant that information is readily available for those to consume. And this is not just in, uh, uh, in 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 the work environment, but if you see it's in everything. Like if there's an incident that happens, um, you know, anywhere in Assam, you get to know about it almost instantaneously. You know, today, um, and this was one fundamental shift that happened. So earlier on, like even if you look at back in 2008 to 2007, mm. when there were a lot of job impacts. Um, mm you you it would take time for that information to come to you and it would and sometimes again, that then. time could be as yeah as long as a year sometimes five months six months before you heard about it mm -hmm. uh, but right now with everything going around with the media social media with empowered individuals employees you hear about it almost instantaneously mm -hmm. so this is one fundamental shift so you know the awareness is has increased multifold um and then the second thing is there's been a multiple uh uh, rounds of disruption that's been going on not not mm -hmm. just now of course now the disruption that is happening is due to it's the virus to and everything yeah. yes but even before that you know we had uh, you know machine learning was disrupting a lot of things mm. automation was disrupting a lot of things uh, and so the world of work has been continuously changing in fact if you see everybody wanted to work from home till you know the pandemic hit us um, wanted to. every single company wanted to every single uh, employee in every single company wanted to work from home it was it was a benefit hours. that everybody yeah, wanted flexi, flexi hours, hours. Hmm. now now everybody's working from home now everybody you know there's more uh, everybody enjoys working from home but what everyone started realizing is when you work from home a lot that kind of starts affecting your work life balance as well um, so, so we will come to that we will come to that joe right. but i want to i want to i want to there's a, an interesting thing that you mentioned, and you began with that, that the state of jobs, the state of employability, we just came to know about it over a period of time. Now it's instantaneous, all right? Consider for a moment that bad news travel, travels faster. Yes. Okay? And yes. What, what I'm, and as you said, that even before this pandemic, we had, we had computers eons back and then machine learning and then, you know, a whole lot of things which were contributing to uh, jobs getting reallocated, fewer people being able to do many things. All right. Yes. So, so what, what was this forebearer of this period, which was giving us hints about what could the future of work look like even before the pandemic? What were the hints we were getting? Well, so one of the things that I think, if you were to look at, um, if you were to look at a hint that work is going to change forever, mm. is is the accessibility for uh, infrastructure and network. I would mm. say this is it's a very simple uh, logic. If you look through it, um, when we started, uh, you know, when when we set up Rice Smart back in two thousand eight, it was extremely difficult to have somebody work from home. To give you an instant example, mm -hmm. um, but as we progress through the years, back in maybe twenty fourteen fifteen, we started hiring um, a lot of our uh, a lot of uh, our employees and consultants and everybody across the country. Sure. Um, you know, so suddenly it, it started becoming easier for people to manage working from different locations and that so you were that space, possibility then you were region agnostic you suddenly became region agnostic and uh, yes and you could hire the best talent for whatever it was you whatever it was that you were looking for because suddenly you didn't have the location constraint ah, you, didn't you didn't need them to be that person got it exactly so if i didn't if my hq is in pune i didn't need that individual to be in pune to start working for me or for uh, our customers you know if yeah. that individual was the best person in their respective ah. field and they can be anywhere, you know, practically in the country or in the world, and they could start working with us. So um, this is an interesting one, Joel, you know, and I'll just again, so you remember you said, you know, you use this word. The hint that I saw in that period, and usually I, I, as a self-employed person over the years, I've seen that. That over the past few years, unlike 
many years back people weren't there because they were there the hint was that people are now being selected and chosen on the basis of their talent yes so how good is that person so good yes, that and- that person being anywhere doesn't matter was that the hint yes yeah and there's a flip side to that also uh, and this cultural shift also happened where if if employees were starting to choose where they want to work mm-hmm. you know it was no more it was no more about you know i will take the first job that comes my way but okay. you know i want to work for an organization that i believe in i want to like we ran a survey i think maybe a year and a half ago where mm-hmm. i think it was 99% of the respondents said in india that they would like to work for an organization who's who has great reputation now right. if you think about that i'm choosing that that's a you know it, if you go back again 8 10 years ago you didn't have a choice you had to go to wherever someone offered you got a job you, you got to any exactly. job you just get a job now you have that choice you you know right. where you want to work uh, mm-hmm. and you want to work in those organizations because of a set of reasons whatever those so reasons the, so the employee also began to choose Yes. What name? What company would be there on the visiting card? Remember, we used to have a visiting card at some point. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And then, so and that that culture then shifted employers as well, because mm. now you want employees to choose you. You know, sure, so sure. it's 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 a slow movement, but it it mm. started becoming where employers want employees to have. uh a, a fantastic experience when they work with that organization mm. and so then the internal brand of an organization started becoming a very important, important aspect absolutely some some companies were already great at this you know like right off the bat but most organizations mm. then started looking at this as something to one attract talent retain talent um and keep you know that legacy knowledge that they built over time with themselves and you know invest into it so now you will see why great place to work makes a lot of sense why sure. uh, you know the top brands to work for makes uh, makes a lot of difference when uh, when employees come out uh, to work for you so it's not just it's not just the company is looking that look what am i what is my stock price but what is the experience what is the stuff that may be written on the glass door uh, you know uh, about us what is the experience yes. we are leaving people with so here yes. here comes the interesting one uh, joel that moving forward one of the things the white elephant which is there around us is the fact that employability is changing from and i'm i'm asking you this question employability sure. is employability changing from a place of many to few fewer options for people uh yes and no so okay. um yes in the sense that traditional things that we used to do that is mm. whatever we used to do with a large number of people are probably condensing and becoming mm. and evolving in a place where fewer people can do that but there are also new streams that are opening up where you may need a lot of people uh, you mm. know so it's it's a mix of that but traditionally i think the the challenge that we are facing at least i in my in my personal opinion is that mm-hmm. yes there is suddenly a lot of supply in the market you know because of yep. whatever uh, current changes that are going yeah. through and this was something that will happen and it it's it's cyclic it, it is going to happen over and over Absolutely. again every few yep. years with this time it was a pandemic next time it could be something else the name changes the, the, the name changes the name changes Sure. It happened back in 2008, but at that time, you know, the impact was a little more limited um, mm-hmm. than it is now. Right now, the pandemic is global; it's hitting global economies, which was not, you know, the scale at back then. So it's there's a there's up. a lot more impact. Yes, it's a level it's, up, and it's kind of playing across the board, across countries, across nationalities. Yes, and and so that makes it even harder for us to uh, look at exactly what we were doing. Like, for instance, to give you an example. Um, office space right mm-hmm. there's a there's a huge industry that is invested in office spaces right mm-hmm. up until this last uh, say up until march until the pandemic hit um you know office spaces were growing exponentially at least uh, you know like the in pune at least there were no more great office spaces you could hire they were all sold inventory was sold for the next at once three years and you know mm-hmm. people were building up large infrastructure mm-hmm. pieces and parks all of a sudden all of that has changed now sure. more more and more organizations are thinking to go back to having people work remotely uh, you know strengthening these kind of things like networking mm. uh, facilities look at hubs 
you know, smaller hubs for people to get together and interact. So they have the human connection. Uh, so now think about the impact of the real estate investments and employees and everybody who's in that particular sector. Yeah. Uh, th that's going to drastically change. Like, so and Joel, if and Joel going... you can be very fair with this, that the, if any sector is impacted, the impact is not limited just to that sector. We know oh, that no. economy economy has so many moving parts so the buying uh, so 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 we can imagine now i just want to uh, just hold you on this interesting one see remember you said that the people had were choosing which organization to work for and you also said now they may not be needed in their earlier role but there are some other roles coming up and yes. not just here anywhere Yes. So I'm, I'm at this point, I'm still with me. Me, the person who needs a job. I'm the person who wants to work. I need yes. to bring home the money to take care of my family. So I'm just talking individually. Now, suddenly, I see that maybe the role that I was earlier working for, working in, is probably, for whatever reason, is not being needed. Right. Okay? And as I step out... I discover that that space of a lot has shrunk. What yes. happens to this guy? What happens to this lady? What what should she be looking for at this point? Well, there are, <clears throat> so to give you, uh, and this is a, probably a little bit longer, the answer, but I think, uh, you know, the phases that we process information are the same regardless of what uh, uh, the stimuli may be. So, if it is an impact in job uh, mm -hmm. specifically, uh, it is <clears throat> it is very impactful emotionally for a particular individual Absolutely. in India today. It's extremely important because it, anywhere it ties in the world, into right? anywhere in the world right. losing a but job. Yes. Like yep, yeah, yes. And so in in an environment where uh, you know the employability itself is low, that that uh, that emotional impact could be a little more than what it usually is. Number one. Yeah. So the 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 best practice over there is and and you know uh, impact is always something that will happen but the idea is how do you process this information um, in every aspect of any any change that happens to you the number one aspect is how to process that information and Got to it. process that information you may need help yeah, i mean mm. you know there are some amazing individuals who are capable of doing it on their own uh, but it, in most cases, you may need someone who would, who should help you process that information. It could All right. be a so, so, mentor. So just for me to understand, just for me to clarify, are you meaning that that news, that news, that whatever, you know, the notice that you're getting, are you going to, how are you going to process it for yourself? And do you also have access to certain other things that you may have had? In fact, you have but you may not have seen in this new light. Are you talking of that processing also? For people to yeah, actually yes. look at that this is gone. Got it. This is gone. And, and we have got enough cases around us where, you know, you've been told it's over. Yes. Now, yes. in that place where this person has been in this job or has been in roles like this for eons and has been very good at it, what is that kind of process that person may first need to do? And then we'll, of course, come as to how that person can be helped for that. Right. So the first part of that, where you process that information, is actually where you bring in closure. Uh, so mm. that you don't discover uh, much over there. But what, it, what you're doing is you're coming to terms with what has happened. You know, the acceptance. Uh, I have acceptance. Uh, so it goes through a, a few different emotions, but eventually where we want to get to is acceptance, that this particular chapter is over and Got I it. need to move beyond this. That's that's step one. That's where we need to focus first for an individual. Mm -hmm. uh, the second part from there, like you and, said... And I just want to hold at this point, Joel. This is a very, very sure. important part. and Because for me, acceptance is not just a, a meditative word. No. Acceptance or the lack of acceptance for me what I've discovered in life is like you are allowing yourself to bleed. Yes. Continually. You know, there is no yes. closure. You're just, you're, you're angry. You're upset. You're blaming somebody, some things, the scenario. Yes. And therefore for me, 
यू नो दिस पार्ट इज वेरी वेरी क्रिटिकल दो इट मे सीम एज अरे यार ठीक है यार हो गया ना नहीं नॉट हो गया द पॉइंट इज दैट कैन यू सी दैट यू आर नॉट अ विक्टिम यस and 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 closure for me closure and acceptance for me is not a sign of weakness but it no, is the sign of that right now this is what it is and what do i do next is up to me so i'm complete about this and now all my senses i'm not wasting my senses upset and angry and frustrated you know yes absolutely so so that's why uh, so that that's exactly why we say closure because acceptance is step 1 once you have acceptance you can close that event that happened and then you can initiate the next thing you want to do next and step. that's where the the discovery phase that you mentioned comes in so the discovery phase is actually where you think about what is it that i can do what is it that the world wants because now ah. these are two different things i can do yeah. a lot of things but what is it that the world wants and how do i you know bridge that gap between what i can do and what the world wants and that's where you have your entire discovery phase and that could involve other things it could it could involve it could be a soft gap which means it's something that you can quickly skill up on you know okay. um it could be a hard gap which means it will take time for you to skill up on but once i know these all of these things i can make a more informed decision okay what is it that i want to do next and in that decision and choice we must also incorporate and you know our coaches do this extremely well at the beginning which is you have to also incorporate that this change is going to keep happening so now when you're going to think about the gaps and what you want to do next you must also think a little in advance like do i want to continue doing this for a reasonable amount of time or is this something that i want to do just now so i can look after my liabilities so that's the discovery phase that really uh, really makes an impact for an individual and helps them then start setting a path to where to go see half the so, so here is here is one thing again i'm kind of so so at one point is that i see a science in this jewel okay i see a science in this and therefore i love to uh, you know interact with specialists because you specialists that's your that's your bread butter jam okay you kind of yes. break it down so so one of the things that we look at when we talk of reinvention is that looking at what is it that the world wants looking at what is it that i have and yes. then as you said now what is the thing that i can bridge and how so if we break it down into nuts and bolts what needs to be done and if there is a process in place and and that's where i say that the if here that human being who is the employee probably very soon going to be an ex employee it's not a mechanical thing for that person that person needs to be really hand held through that and therefore the role of the organization to make sure that that person is being hand held through this is not just left yes and uh, and the impactful part could be twice so there is you have impacts when when the economy is doing well right mm -hmm. so there is probably a lot more opportunity at that point in time and then you have impacts when the environment is not doing so well so mm -hmm. you would probably need more assistance and more hand holding especially in a scenario like this where we are because uh, this would mean that you need more assistance to wade through it like imagine if, if with any impact right the what happens is there is chaos all around you and what what does what is the best way to come out of the chaos it's it's to follow a path to have a single path that you can walk again and again repeatedly till things settle all around you so this is the simplest way to exit from any form of a chaotic situation meditation tells you this um, you know uh, all forms of uh, uh, controlling the chaos or trying to uh, acclimate with the uh, chaos teaches you the same thing you need to have a process and a path and once you start walking down that path several times things start easing around uh, uh, easing out around you um, so just that, let me flip that over to you ashish so in what i said like the gap between what the world wants and you know what what do you have to offer like now you have done this several times over the last few years many years um how were you able to go through this process like it's it's not just about change it's also about processing these facts so i think it it'd be extremely valuable to hear from you how you were able to go from uh, you know where you were to what how should i 
kind of you know change what should i project all of those things yeah so joel very uh, the first thing that kind of i have and again this is hindsight but what i've discovered in this period and that's what we share with people is that for us to first get the life is in movement life is not in static so that that success which was there during abundance it was also not static it was in movement and that movement has reached us here where suddenly where there was abundance there isn't all right and for us to not give up on that to really get at even this is not static so a key part for me which i have discovered in my life and I, how i've used it is that when in doubt joel i move you know i i i just don't look at the same view and saying yeah it's really bad yeah it really is bad it will keep looking bad because i'm sitting at the same place so right. key part which i keep sharing with people is your ability to move because as you move as you move new horizons appear not all of those horizons you may like but there are still newer horizons and and a part which you mentioned which i quite like is for us to get that our job is not really to get the best horizon how we see it over the years in my life uh, uh, traveling as an actor across languages or over the last 6 years uh, you know you know uh, having these conversations with organizations and doing coaching workshops and all those kind of things one thing is absolutely clear i have to continually augment myself my older self is not enough for my tomorrow so when we get that straight then and, and you know something which i love and i i love, love to share that no brainer if anyone has experience the only thing that we need to keep adding to experience is learning Yes. and somehow over a period of time people when they are experienced they stop learning <laughs> they think that learning is only meant for the novices who have just joined or are still in college yes. and learning gives you the capability it gives you the capability to reposition yourself look at yourselves in ways that you never ever thought for example i never ever thought joel that i will be ever engaging in conversations with organizations and guess what it is not just one part my career as an actor has altered because i now when i go and when i shoot my stuff i'm a different person because you know i have realized a little bit more about life and when i come back from that into this there's something more so for me this is a process and except that when you are self employed you know we don't have the luxury of having you know an organization like yours who uh, you know who organizations handle you know hire to take care of them so the process probably is the same but it's there's a lot of chaos in that process so you know i i feel really great when when people like you you know and, and when you add grace to this movement and that's something which i would really want you to talk about that can people find grace in this change well yes so I thank you thank you for that uh, ashish yes i think grace empathy these are some key things that we absolutely have to take into consideration when we have this conversation about this particular topic and i think uh, i think just overall i think empathy is is very important it, not in just you know your uh, collaboration with uh, as an employer employee yeah yeah but just with anything that you do like it's it's extremely important in every way whether it's you, you know the, the domestic help in your house whether it is people that you know um, all of those things so grace uh, the reason why grace is important is because um is because everybody is human you know at the end of the day like we are very complicated social creatures that uh, if you if you see in my bio um, it says that uh, you know i believe in uh, human machine symbiosis that's that's the future that i think is the best uh, for everything but short of that i think humans are very complex social creatures and so when 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 they're doing something for you especially if they're working as as an employee for you or if you're an employer or somebody i think the very least that you can have or the very least expectation should be empathy and grace that you know in all of the different things that you're doing um and 
if it is delivery of uh, to give you an example let me give you an example maybe that would sound a little better notification of an employee saying that uh, that you know i have to let you go you know this is uh, this is a hard conversation it's not easy at all and everybody says that it needs to be empathetic right it has to be full of empathy it has to be respectful i agree with you 100% but what does that really mean you know what 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 does empathy mean in that particular situation when you're letting somebody go um it's not it is to some extent the tone of how you say it you mm-hmm. know how you convey the message uh, it is also the clarity of the message that to make sure that you know that person understands that it was not his or her fault but it was an org decision you know that was taken for whatever reason so clarity of message is very important and the last thing that most uh, most of the time that seems to be missing is to just pause and listen to what that individual has to say about it mm. see empathy in that situation is hearing them out hearing them you out you may not be able to you may not be able to do anything from that perspective but you're yeah. giving them time to process that information um at that point in time which is because important that because that person it, that person is not just a resource is a human being who has a family who's got personal yes. concerns so it's not that hey listen the organization doesn't need you any longer hard luck tough luck but going that extra mile to get into the psyche of that person and and not not allay their fears saying that it's going to be all right but letting them know that this is part of the entire deal yes right and so then- Joel, here is here is one thing which i want to ask you and and this is very so a, a month back we were we were doing something with a very large organization and we are doing a program for them a digital program speaking to some 3000 plus people uh who are their business associates and something amazing came out of that while we were chatting with the business associates one of the things came up is that business associates know the dangers of business Yes. they're not weaklings they're not weaklings they know what this entire game is about and i'll tell you why why i'm bringing this up so joel at one point is the somebody else's responsibility towards me i also yes. want to flip it i want to flip flip it what is my responsibility towards myself do i continuously seek empathy because i have discovered something and and this what i'm talking about is not not the ideal conversation what i'm talking about is what really is in fact recently i made a video on this which says can you have double standards and i i tell you what my double standards are can you be amazingly empathetic to the entire world and not expect empathy from them and now this is a this is a tricky one but i really want us to get because the yes. moment we codify the moment i codify in my head i'm being empathetic joel why aren't you getting empathetic and trust me as most of us go through life i promise you and you know people who are listening in you will find yourself more empathetic than people are towards you how come yes how come you are the best guy in the planet somewhere for me joel therefore you know the the self employed you know we we <laughs> through my life as it you know 28 years career as an actor and, and whatever else that i do the expectation level towards the world is something which i need to manage otherwise yes. i will just be a repository of hurt now you understand the ones i'm saying that yes the organizations understanding understand the reason you know they should have empathy and you know all the things that are needed yet at the same time if this guy this lady gets the world will not exactly always dish out what i think is understanding me and no. this is the thing where I, i i personally feel that's where this person being empowered by coaching for them to get that life is not exactly going to be how you want it and then if if it doesn't happen that means you're not being listening joel to me right. imagine if in my head i got a joel may not be listening but how do i take care of myself and how do i keep remaining empath- empathetic to the world yes and there's one other aspect that i'd like to pull into what you just said there uh, you know this is this this little thing i read this morning i'll come back to that but 
See, yeah. and you're very right. Empathy is something that the organization will have to have when they're impacting the individual. Empathy is something that one one in my line of work. Let's let me put it like this. Um, in my line of work. Uh, the human resource team is a very important aspect of who we work with and who we deal with and, uh, in many organizations. And I, I firmly believe that one of the most impacted in any impact is also the human resource and the ops team that are actually delivering the notification. Yes. And I'll tell you why. You know, there is expectation from them to be empathetic, like you said, but there is also a response that they will get from the individually impacted employee. And this could be anything because, you know, they're being impacted at that time. And you sure, know, it absolutely. Be, uh, anger, it could be, uh, you, you know, emotion, it could be uh, crying, it could be a whole bunch of things. And, and then the human resource team has to deal with this input that's coming towards them, the stimuli that's coming uh, towards them. And a lot of times, I don't think that um, they may be prepared for that, mm. you know, because if all of the focus is on the impacted and not so much of the focus on those who are impacting. Uh, and I think that's also a very important aspect because we need to help them manage their emotions as well. Yes. And we need to help them process what it is that uh, that is coming back at them. What what is it that they should expect, and then how to process that as well? So that so what you're saying, what, you what said, you're saying is that also working with the messenger. Yes, absolutely. So that's where where, where what you said comes squarely into place. That you know, I have to give empathy for by all means, but that does not mean I can expect it also. You know, I'm going to do what I can. I'm going to be the best of myself. But at the same time, I'm going to be prepared for what I'm going to get. Uh, or if somebody is not empathetic towards me, and how do I process that? And with that response, I'm not going to give up my empathy. Exactly. Because, you know, exactly. for me, in this entire scenario, and there, there's a lot of upset and anger, Joel. And, and therefore, for me, you know, in a way, when we when we spoke of the, the, the season of hope, for me... Uh, as I understand that when there is abundance of something, we take it for granted. Yes. You know, even when things were doing great, you know, like everything before March now looks like amazing. But still we had our complaints, right? We still had our complaints. But now what this period has done, it's been a, it's been a thappad. It's, it's a large, uh, you know, it's a, it's a big bang which has happened, which, which tells us, and, and you brought forth that point, and that's where I want to take you further. That this is this this huge shift which has happened right now is going to be part of a continuing one. Yes. So we need to really put in systems in place. In terms of and and here is something which I want to ask you that something like you know what you people are doing at uh, uh, you know Rice Mart. How are you dealing with this person? This person. I have never worked in any other role for years other than the role that I have worked in. How yes. do I find out what are the other roles I could do? And, and it's yes. maybe it is there in me. Can you? Can you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we have. So, like I said, the second most important aspect of this is the discovery phase, and the discovery phase is where you look at what can you do. Uh, like I said, what are my strengths? So that's very important for us to uh, understand. So we have something uh, that we help each individual with, which is called their personal value proposition. Now, personal value proposition. Okay, can you explain that, please? In in essence, it's just who are you? If I mm -hmm. asked you, Ashish, who are you? How would you introduce yourself? You know, uh, what is it that you would, if I met you, like how I met you, uh, you know, one one fine day for lunch, uh, how would you say who I am to yeah. that, to the next individual? Okay. Yeah. So now this is, this is, uh, this comes, it steps into a little bit of knowing yourself and also branding because you mm -hmm. need to, if you, if I need to sell, uh, if I need to sell this iPhone, I need to know what is it that people want in this iPhone to sell it successfully. And what do I offer? So first I come to know exactly. what is it that I can have, I do have, and how is it that can I offer it to the world? Exactly. So we call it PVP. It's it's like your 30-second pitch. So th this becomes the underlining factor of what your strengths are and what you would like to do in the future. So this then gets inculcated throughout the entire process, making you more and more confident about yourself and your strengths. This is step and one. And you can communicate. But, uh, you can communicate your strength, not just discover it 
but also have the ability to communicate it in maybe those 30 seconds or whichever way in a way that the people buy buy into that yes very good and and also you can tailor it depending mm. on who you're going to meet and why you're going to meet you know because there, i love there's, this there's, i love this there's if i'm going to a and if i'm going to b uh, both may not need the same strengths like you know like i'm talking to you them. today right you have, have them but you need what to position you yeah correct you need Beautiful. to position your strength so the second thing is of course once you find the gaps and what it is that you want to do uh, one one thing that i like a lot is of course you can stick to what you're doing and th look at what you could do there next or you could pivot i'm a big basketball fan and uh, you know i used to play basketball for a very long time in my life and one of the most essential things in basketball is how quickly you can pivot um, whether it is you know to take your shot yes whether it's it's to fake the ball whatever it is pivoting is is central in in, in basketball and uh, and if you see in life and in career pivots are very very important uh, if you're self-employed, you would know this yes. more because, yeah. you know, life is full of pivots. Uh, life if life needs it. Yes. And, but if you're in a career and if you come mm. to this particular stage where your career is kind of, uh, you don't know where to go next, how do you discover what are the pivots that you can make? You mm. know, so this is important. And this is where, you know, a coach can really work with you to understand, okay, uh, you have this as your strength. And you have this as your strength, okay? Looking at this particular strength, there are these other areas that you could possibly start looking at. And maybe one of these areas could be a longer future for you as opposed to Beautiful. this short term. Uh, this Beautiful. Thing. And I just, uh, just want to add, uh, since I love food, I'm sorry, I have to bring in food. For a very long time in this conversation, there's no food. Exactly. So how I, how I love to, uh, people are laughing here and there, but that's okay. Uh, is that, uh, you know, it's, it's like ingredients, I have a whole lot of ingredients within me. What does Joel want? Does he want Chinese? Or does he want Thepla? So I must have, I must be cognizant of what is this person needing. And, and I love this example that you have given of a pivot. And, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't know of this as, as, as a distinction. But you're absolutely right, Joel. Uh, you know, when you are, are self-employed, you do not have the benefit of a lot of uh, help from anyone. And you have to find your own ways. And I have discovered that not only is it important for you to gauge yourself, but also offer people what they may need. So the role of creativity, that I'm not just this. I'm also this and I could also be this. And I'm listening. And I say that, hey, listen, what mix of me? So for example, for me, I'm an actor. I'm a traveler. I'm a communicator. And that's what I'm doing. I've been continuously traveling. I've been continuously uh, doing performances. And I've essentially been uh, somebody who's just allowing my thoughts. Because I, I have amazing, you know, I keep thinking. And I keep joining dots. So what I've discovered for myself is that even as I went across cultures, Joel, and many of the languages I didn't know, what I had to do is that I had to find different ways to enact those roles in such a way that you cannot believe that I don't speak those languages. And, yes. and those, were not, those were not the rules I was taught when I began studying acting. And, and mm -hmm. therefore, for me, uh, you know, the pivot is, you know, for me, even as the word seems, it's just your ability, your ability to move. You're, you are with your center, but you're able to pivot and create new opportunities for yourself. And, and really, this, this, you know, what this does it brings me to the thing which I really love talking about all the time, about the player. About this guy Absolutely. is the player. This guy is the player. He's not depending on the other players not to do well for this person to do well. Yes. We are in the midst of this pandemic. Before this pandemic, there was some other thing, which wasn't called a pandemic, but which wasn't very rosy either. Right. Now, imagine if I can have faith and trust in my central strengths and be ready to reposition myself, okay, really create some things of this, use something of this and marry it with something else and create a whole new world, then I'm the player. I'm not saying that, no, I only know this. Can I use right. dribble in a different way? Can I use a throw in a different way? Can I use a feint in a different way? Beautiful. I love this. 
Right. And and so the the I I think the other personal gap that I feel that that you do is so once you pivot, right? Or once you discover what your pivots are or where your strengths are and how you want to position it, you have to then get your entire uh, positioning based on those pivots or based on those strengths. To give you an example, you know, my resume or whatever branding document that I, I have should be tuned to the next thing I want to do, not for the things I've done in the past, because the things I've done in the past is done. Now I'm pivoting, I'm moving. So the Beautiful. entire thing should focus on the next thing that I'm going to do. Your LinkedIn profile for that, uh, for that particular uh, purpose that, that we are looking at, the, the fundamental mistake of LinkedIn that I, I see that most people make is that you make one profile and it stays the same forever. That's not how it should be. It should evolve with you. It should evolve with the positions you've had. It should evolve with the interests that you had. And it should evolve with the strengths that, that you, you should have. And um, what, you know, what the scenario so, is, what, what they are wanting from us. Paul, sorry. Yes. So yeah, what the what, market what, is now yeah. wanting. Yeah. Exactly. And so it's a live if, thing. It's let's, a live. The resume is a live thing. It's not like I have a resume. What's right. my resume and, this week? And if you want, so to the base tactics of finding a job, if you want a recruiter to discover you, you have to be active with your branding. It's very simple. Mm -hmm. And your branding has to speak to that individual. And so you need to um, you need to you need to make sure that whatever you're projecting in whichever form, it could be a resume, it could be a bio, uh, it could be a website, whatever it is, it should talk to that what the person wants to hear. So they will hire you for that. So that's very important. It's for me. This guy is for me. <laughs> you should get this guy is for me. He, what he's saying, I love that. I want this guy. So it's it's essentially a, a communication game. After you have you found out your thing, now you keep your communication alive. And it's not a static one. I'm, I'm just loving this yes. because what's, what's happening here is, and that's where it, I want to segue into this other thing. So this communication, how important do you think in this entire communication and even coming to know what is it that the world wants? rather than just this LinkedIn zone in which I'm just looking at, how important do you think it will also be to network and to understand and people so, from different fields? Beautiful. So the second thing I was going to say to that is, one is hmm. positioning your brand, number one. And the second thing is to reaching out and networking with individuals that can help that brand. Um, hmm. And this is, again, important because... Networking is not easy by any terms. You know, it's it's not a very comfortable position when you're going and asking people to, you know, help you or whatever. But the, the, the thing is, you can, when you're networking, there's an art to it, right? Like you don't just go and ask someone, like, uh, for instance, like I make it a point to respond to every single LinkedIn message that I get, like every single one. And a lot of them say, here's my resume, find me a job. Now, unfortunately, even though I want to, that's not something that I can help with. You know, like I cannot just find you a job. There's a process to it. And then there's, there's ways to get through. If I understood you a little better, maybe I could even recommend you somewhere. You know, sure. just giving a personal example. Sure. So when you network, be cognizant of who you're networking with and why you're networking with that individual. This is very, very important. Mm -hmm. Very important. Um, and, and, and find similarities find strengths that will echo to them uh, like i ashish if you remember how did we started talking because i send you uh, a linkedin message remember all the way back when i i had no you didn't know me i didn't know you i send you a linkedin message saying we'd like to have a conversation with you that's you know pretty much where we started and you were gracious enough to give me an audience and we sat down we talked about what i do and what you do then we felt that you know there's something that this 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 whole world is doing is amazing and that's how this relationship built over time and you know it, it took a while to do that so i the second thing about networking is i would look at that i would look at strengths your strengths that you're projecting to people who are in that same space, um, randomly messaging, you know, people saying that I need a job usually does not help. Yeah. Very rarely does it help. It needs to be more targeted. So when you're networking, mm -hmm. when you're applying, um, even when you're reaching out to individuals to help you, mm -hmm. make sure that they can help you because otherwise mm -hmm. it, it's just lost time and lost opportunity. Yeah. You know, so make a target list, like, you know, even if it is networking, even if it is application of jobs, even if it is a new business that you want to do, mm -hmm. condense the information, make a target list and start from there. That's your step one. 
okay. and from there you can start working through the process like you can say okay i i you know i emailed ashish today i emailed joel today i emailed so many people of the 10 people i emailed three people responded now let's start working with those three people that respond don't worry about the people that uh, did not that haven't responded Sure. That's absolutely like again coming back to uh, you know my boss Dan he tells me this all the time like whenever I am I'm I'm in a fix he tells me this he says Joel if you don't take the shot you're gonna hundred percent miss if you mm. take the shot there's a fifty fifty probability that you could maybe you get it you could not maybe get it so always take the shot you know write to the person that you want introduce yourself a little bit make sure you're aligning the strength that they would like to see in you yeah and, and position that messaging really well then you will see that you get more responses you will be able to talk to that individual more your networking will be fruitful so what you are saying is that, saying that even as you are networking that message of yours if my message is going out to you I will need to modify it basis what I have already known about you. So I have researched you as I reach out to you. Yes. So you're not just another person that I'm reaching out to. No. And if you know about the organization I'm working with, for instance, uh, that's an added plus. Like I understand, uh, you know, this. I understand that, you know, that you need help. So I, I went through your profile. I went through your organization. I, I just tailor it like everybody wants to help. There is, I don't know of a single person who does not like to help if I can. I love this. Uh, I love this. And this, the second thing to bear in mind about networking, especially when you're looking for a job, is every company in India or around the world has an internal referral bonus uh, that an employee can avail if they, if they go ahead uh, to uh, refer someone internally. So there is already an incentive for someone to refer you. Mm. You know, there's, it's already in there. What you need all to right. do is so, make so the right so connection. For, for all of you who are watching, this is a very interesting one. So even as you're reaching out, don't feel shy. All right, this is something which I've learned Absolutely. as an actor, my friend. Ask for work. You know, when somebody says, "What do you?" I'm an actor, and some people say, "But you're working still." You're asking, yes, but I still want to work. And so even so, I, I really think that there is a lot of dignity, and the dignity you provide to yourself. So for me, I, I've always felt that there's a lot of dignity in asking for work because you are doing an honest day's job. And I just want to bring it here. And, and what you just said, there may be some people who may say things which you may not like. I personally felt that's their problem. That's their relationship for, with asking for work. If you can give dignity to yourself because you are going to do an honest day's job and to bring food onto your table. you know. And, and over the years, uh, Joel, in my life, I've discovered that of the many things that I've done, many things people have not understood. When, when I was doing a lot of Hindi films, that's when I started doing films down south. And a lot of people said, oh, so you're doing uh, language films. Huh? You're doing language films. And I had to deal with it. I had to, you know, face to face. And then I could actually one day, I liberated myself by saying, you know what? Uh, I've got great respect for this work because it is bringing the food on my table and it's taking care of my child's education and I can take care of my extended family. So it's that feeling for us to get that we are not small when we ask for help. I think that's a very, very, very critical part of this, this piece. That do not ever, ever doubt your level. It's, it's, it's not a demotion when you ask for it. Because in a working life, you will go through times when you is doing great and when it's not doing great. And both are in passing. Absolutely. And so... And again, unless you ask, how would you know? You know, not to hey, you know, how, not to hey, huh? Exactly, exactly. So, 50 no, yeah, 100 percent. If you take the shot, I mean, if you take the shot, there's a 50 50 chance. If yeah. not, there's a hundred percent chance. So, to come back to that empathy, uh, thing that you said, uh, Ashish, about that, the thing I read this morning was about this anecdote about somebody, um, who saves a snake from fire. I don't know if you mm -hmm. read it, I read it this morning, in fact. Mm -hmm. Um, and it said that. Uh, so there was this guy who saved uh, a snake from the fire. There was a, a snake in fire. He went and picked up the snake and the snake bit him and he dropped the snake back into the fire. And then he went and he got a stick and then he saved the snake again. Um, mm -hmm. So there was someone standing by and they asked him, why did you save the snake? It bit you. So why did you still go ahead and save the snake? So he said, um, the snake bit me because it's in its nature to bite me. 
And mm. I save the snake because it's in my nature to save the snake. Um, now, I, I read this this morning and I thought that's very profound. So uh, coming back to you, I will be empathetic or I will be kind to everybody that I interact yes. with. It's not necessary that they, because my inherent uh, need is to be kind, you know, um, but it's it's not that the world is always going to be kind and that's okay you know that's not that's not a problem let's take that on its stride and continue to be kind when you're networking people won't respond that's okay but five mm. people will let's start from there it's these slow build ups so the the main thing i think is everything takes its time let's just understand this being um, you know anything coming fast is not easy so let's just be patient let's take its time um, and, and make sure that, you know, uh, that, that we work towards it. And the last thing on empathy, again, is it's empathy is not only when you're letting go of employees or any of those things. Right now, in this pandemic time, um, there's hundreds of people working from home. Your employees are working from home. A lot of them were, you know, shut in before they could even get back to their hometown. So now they're living alone in a pandemic situation where they don't have a support structure uh, around them. And so... Empathy also means you calling and checking on how they're doing as, as an employer, as a you know human resource team, as a manager, as a leader, uh, making sure that they have everything they want. Is that in your job description? No. no you want to not. be an impactful leader? Yes, yeah. that's what you would do. Going oh. that extra mile to make sure that your team, your people are the best taken care of. I think these are the fundamental changes that I think going forward forward we will see much much more for so this is uh, you know this is fantastic uh, joel what you have shared is um, you know and when we when we talk of when we talk of employability in the future there is a whole lot which is formulaic and then there's a much more about our innate and i think um, when organizations realize, and like each one of us realizes, that there is more to us than just being in reaction to this present moment, that is when we are in touch with who we really are. So when you when you can when you can actually look at human beings as a talent pool, you know, an amazing amount of we're going to meet this person again. You know, I'm going to come face to face again. How will it be if I can leave this person with an amazing space? And for each one of us to really get, you know, the kind of work that you people are doing, uh, uh, Joel, and I'm kind of really proud of that fact. Because I, I think that in a market economy, we all know that there are going to be periods when things are going to be, uh, you know, things are going to be having these upheavals like we are seeing. But who we are during that time is going to define us. And, uh, yes. uh, and and somewhere I think that as a professional, when there is help for the organization to manage, not to not to be in a knee jerk scenario, but to really get that hey, listen, there are some professionals who are working on, so that our reputation is also safe. Because I really think that reputation is uh, not just that you know, and, and and as you said that. A couple of weeks or probably a year, a year from now, things are going to change. And each one of us is going to be remembered for the calls we took, uh, you know, when, when we were under stress. So this has, been a, this has been a very, very, very invigorating conversation for me. And uh, so we, we had some very interesting people are sending messages from all over. The people from Bangladesh who are sitting... Uh, uh, Okay, and uh, so here we have outplacement undoubtedly ticks a lot of best practices boxes. Uh, uh, Anamika Summer says very, very inspiring. Uh, so, uh, yes, and so, so Namita Shah says such a wonderful story, Joel. Indeed, empathy, trust, and patience is more about us and helps in self liberation and self healing. And uh, thank you, Namita. So what I really, what I really got in this period, in this conversation with you, is that in this long life, let's not start to have get carried away by small victories and small losses. Uh, life is much longer, and if we can keep our centrality in place, uh, we can do wonder things.
wonderful things. In deep appreciation, Joel Paul, for having agreed to come and share your thoughts, because your thoughts uh, are actionable, and people are going to really benefit from that. And I'm also very happy that this is the first episode of Living Forward, where we are celebrating the season of hope. And what better way to do it than let, letting people know that we will not be defined by the season that the world is offering us. We will go out and fill, infuse the world with the hope. Because this world at this point needs hope. So thank you, Joel. Thank you, each one of you who have joined us this Sunday thank morning, you, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. Joel, something that you want to say? Thank you, Ashish, for having me. Uh, uh, you know, and uh, uh, this was a great conversation. Uh, just, uh, I, I hope I, uh, uh, you know, I, <laughs> I felt like I was um, uh, talking very loudly. I apologize. I was just very excited when I talk about these things. Uh, but thank you for having me and thank you for the opportunity to present. One last thing I will leave you with is, uh, is one of, uh, somebody told me once that uh, the best way to manage people is um, is when you are not managing them, uh, they would want to have a coffee with you. So that's your yardstick. If uh, wow. if when you see them anywhere in the world and they want to have a coffee with you uh, or a you know a drink with you, then you've done it well. Uh, if they you know kind of avoid you and walk away, well then you know where your uh, management has been. So uh, aspire to make sure that every person that you work with would always like to have a coffee with you. That's that's the last thing I'm going to say. On this beautiful note, thank you. Thank you, Joel. Thank, thank you, you each one of you. Let's, let's aspire. Let's actually create relationships where people are not just getting in touch with you because of the post that you have or the company that you're working with, but because you've really done something to touch them. Thank you, Joel. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Wonderful. Bahut, bahut shukriya. You all have a fantastic Sunday wherever you are. Take care of yourself. Stay bright and stay hopeful. This is the season of hope. Thank you for being here with us. Uh, we at Avid Minor, we are extremely grateful that uh, we can uh, create these interactions for you. We would love to hear your comments. Please come over to our website, Avid Minor, leave your thoughts. Follow us on our social media handles and Twitter uh, at Ashish Ved and Instagram, Ashish Vidyarthi1. Thank you so much. Godspeed. Take care. Bye. Thank you.